Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Monday evening to you all. Hope you guys had a great Monday, a great start to your work week, and feeling great out there tonight. In this evening's video, we're going to continue to discuss what we've been talking about over the last several nights, and that is this storm system that's pretty much right in front of us now. It's going to be cranking up as early as Thursday morning across areas of the central U.S. and then make its way across the Ohio Valley, the south, the eastern U.S., and it's going to possibly bring some severe weather to the south. We'll discuss that in this video towards the tail end of it. It's going to bring a lot of rain for a lot of folks. I'm not talking about flooding rains necessarily just due to the speed of this system, but I think the dominant precipitation type is likely going to be rain for most people. But stay tuned if you're a winter weather fan because I do think there's a little bit of a wild card with this system that could potentially surprise some areas of maybe New England or the Northeast, maybe even areas in the Mid-Atlantic. We'll talk about that scenario and how it is possible. Not likely at this point, but possible. And I certainly think areas in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley could see a little bit of back-end snow from this that could accumulate. It could be some accumulating snow across areas and maybe Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, um, maybe Ohio, uh, maybe Missouri. We'll talk a little bit about that for you folks. And then um, we're going to talk about how this weekend could potentially be a good weekend to take your kids up to the mountains if you're along the eastern U.S., like the mountains of Tennessee, North Carolina, West Virginia, Virginia where I think some back-end moisture could work into these areas and potentially deliver a little bit of snow behind the system Friday and the Saturday. So we're going to discuss it all for you folks. If you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it as always. I've had to start this video over about 15 times. I don't know why I cannot get it together, but uh, it seems like I'm in a roll at this point. So we're going to keep it rolling. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over as always, put those in the comments below so I can pray over it and so others can do so too. So let's get rolling here. Let's take a look at the Euro. We're going to jump right into this. We're not just, we're not going to lag. We're just going to go right into it. We're going to take a look at the Euro, the GFS, and the Canadian model. So we'll just start this off into the wee hours of the morning this coming Thursday. So the next couple days, as you can tell, low pressure is not a favorable track for snow across the Eastern U S it's already cutting across the Ohio Valley. We've pretty much have known that for days. So we start this off and this is for Thursday morning. Look, snow's falling in areas of central to Northern Missouri. Thursday morning, uh, January the 12th, if I fail to mention a time frame, which I do sometimes, uh, look up here. There's an area, I know this is pretty hard to see probably on your phones, uh, TVs is probably a little bit better. And there's also a timestamp right here also, but I will continue to try to mention it. As we get into Thursday around midday, uh, this is all rain, obviously, in the greens down here in the south, the mid-Atlantic, and most of the Ohio Valley. But look as this low pressure scooting by. you got cold air, marginal cold air, but enough for mid-January standards, uh, kind of ushering in behind this low pressure. And therefore, you got rain changing the snow based off the Euro for areas like Chicago and Central and northern areas of Illinois. It's even snowing as far southwest as St. Louis. We keep this going at the same time, we probably have some severe weather ongoing in the south, which if you're wondering about that, I'll have a timestamp for that that you guys can skip ahead, but I'll talk briefly on that. And just remember, we're not in these short range cams right now, these convective models. So we really don't know exactly how this is going to unfold, but the chances are is that this is likely going to be what we call a linear threat which means it's probably going to be a line of storms and damaging winds are probably going to be the biggest threat, but there will be a chance of isolated tornadoes. But we'll talk about that here in a second. But we keep this going into a Thursday evening. And what you see here is a lot of rain for Ohio points east all the way into the uh, northeast. Uh, the only areas that are seeing winter weather are these higher elevations of Vermont, New Hampshire, and New York State in the northern sections of the state and Maine. Low pressure is just scooting right over the Ohio Valley, heading right into, potentially, right into southeast uh, Canada. Uh, but look behind it. This is this is kind of the first wild card area that you got to watch out for. This is delivering some pretty heavy wet snow into central and northern sections of Indiana, eastern areas of Illinois, as we're getting into Thursday evening. Um, you know, northern to western areas of Michigan. This is some pretty heavy wet snow. You see the darker blues? That's some pretty heavy snow. And then you keep this going into about the middle of the night, Thursday night and a Friday. And most of Michigan, snow is falling. And then you still, you, some of this moisture with cooler air coming in behind this low pressure, some of this moisture all the way as far south as Kentucky begins to mix with some snow. All rain for the I-95 corridor, not just the I-95 corridor, but you know, pretty far inland of the northeast and mid-Atlantic also. You keep this rolling and cold air begins to usher in. Some kind of secondary load begins to try to get going. Don't focus too much on this yet. But as you can tell, rain begins to shift to a little bit of snow in areas of Kentucky. Even the plateau of Tennessee, which is, 
which is always favored in these kind of setups. And, you know, a lot of times the valley between the plateau and the mountains, the Cumberland Pl uh, Plateau here in the mountains, typically this is kind of an area that kind of gets gypped sometimes, but we'll see what happens. But it's already rain changing the snow in the higher elevations of the mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina as we're getting into Friday morning. And then a lot of heavy snow in northern areas of Maine, but even in the higher elevations of Vermont, New Hampshire, New York State, it is mainly rain. But look at this backside moisture. I really think maybe Friday could be kind of a wintry day for areas of Indiana, Ohio, as I think there will be a lot of a snow flying around. Is it going to be heavy snow? We're not sure. The latest Euro, for example, for about midday Friday shows an area of moderate snow anywhere from Indiana, Ohio, northern sections of Kentucky as possible. I think it's going to be snowing like crazy in the higher elevations of the mountains of North Carolina and Tennessee. Uh, midday Friday, I really do. I think there could be snow flurries or snow showers as far south as northern Alabama. But watch this secondary load that begins to show up here. And uh, as you can tell, I'm getting into the middle of the night, Friday night and a Saturday morning, and it's snowing like crazy in the, in the higher elevations of eastern Kentucky, uh, Virginia, uh, West Virginia. Um, the North Carolina and Tennessee mountains, uh, you know, you got snow flying around eastern Ohio, western Pennsylvania, not heavy snow, but some light snow showers. And then watch this. And the Euro has showed this over the last three or four runs. Secondary low pressure begins to develop right here as we're getting into about four. Saturday about midday. This is throwing moisture back into the northeast, even areas of the Delmarva region and the mid-Atlantic. And now you got heavy snow, moderate to heavy snow, potentially flying around areas like Philadelphia, Baltimore. And uh, it's all rain for southern New England just due to the fact that you're really close to the low pressure. But as you're getting into Saturday afternoon, look at that rain snow line trying to sink closer to northern uh, New Jersey. New York City It's really close. And then as we're getting into the middle of the night, Saturday night into Sunday morning, this is right in the middle of the night, you got this little band pivoting all the way down into Delaware, all the way up into Vermont, New Hampshire, and it's cold enough right here for some a band of heavy wet snow. And this is just one run of the European, but I mean, we're, we're pretty much on the heels of this event at this point. Um, but, you know, the European has showed this the last few runs. And you keep this going and brings a little bit more light snow into southern New England and the northeast. But, you know, it ends up being a pretty hefty run for those regions. So it's a wild card. You know, it brings snow, you know, very close to Washington, D.C. as we're getting into Saturday evening. So it's just a scenario. Now you look at the GFS, same kind of deal. Low pressure cuts. This brings snow. A little bit more snow for more areas of southern Illinois. Bring snow as far south as Indianapolis. You know, if you stop it right here, this is around Thursday afternoon. The GFS wants to have an area of moderate to heavy snow over in Indianapolis. Um, this has rain change in the snow for western areas of Ohio. Rain change in the snow for uh, Detroit. Doesn't really bring much snow into areas of uh, Chicago. But, you know, this would bring some backside heavy snow Thursday evening for areas of Indiana, northern Ohio, the Detroit, Michigan area, and this could eventually switch rain to snow for areas like Cleveland. Dump a few inches of snow on Cleveland. It's just, it's definitely something we need to watch. All rain for these areas, um, but watch, you know, as we're getting into Friday morning, it's snowing in areas of the mountains of the southern Appalachian Mountains, and then snow showers just flying around all over the place, especially in the eastern Ohio Valley and central Ohio Valley, and I think it'll be kind of a wintry day Friday. Both, all models show this. A lot of snow showers, a lot of back-end moisture flying around. And then it shows that secondary low on the GFS. Here it is right here, but it is not far enough northwest to de deliver any kind of backside moisture into this cooler air into the northeast that would promote, you know, a um, heavy snow event for you folks. And, you know, I really think uh, the northwest flow event uh, in the mountains of the southern Appalachian Mountains could definitely keep going all the way in through Saturday evening, maybe Sunday morning. Um, the, so... As you can tell, the GFS is much different when it comes to that secondary low. Okay, it pretty much is following the same picture as the European with the snow in the Ohio Valley. Okay, backside snow all the way into the southern Appalachian Mountains. But watch what the Canadian does, which isn't necessarily the most reliable model. Uh, but same kind of deal. The Canadian kind of on this run follows more of the Euro with the main primary low pressure. It doesn't deliver much snow. As much snow as European, though. But, you know, we get to this point. We're getting to Friday morning. This shows widespread snow showers, snow flurries as far south as, you know, 60, 70% of the state of Tennessee. 
Um, Kentucky seeing snow showers, all the light blue here. And then we keep this rolling. And look what happens here. Low pressure begins to develop into the mid-Atlantic and areas of North Carolina. And this is heavy snow falling in eastern Kentucky, the western areas, basically the mountains of Virginia, uh, eastern West Virginia, and the mountains of, West, of uh, North Carolina and Tennessee, especially Tennessee, those northwest float. Uh, northwest facing slopes always get that's like a tongue twister for me uh, but low pressure really gets going here and it does some weird stuff and all of a sudden it crashes this rain as we're getting into saturday morning into heavy snow for like washington dc now please when you look at this i know i got some viewers from the northern va region washington dc kind of area maryland please don't look at this and just bank on it I know a lot of people do that, and I, and I wish people wouldn't, uh, but I know a lot of people get excited. This isn't a forecast. We're just taking a look at several model runs and how how different they are at this close to the storm. It's funny, you know, if we go back 48 hours, I feel like we had more of an idea of what was going to happen as opposed to right now. So I really think the, the overnight model runs are going to be pretty wild to watch. I really do. Of course, I'll be asleep, but I'll be up at 4 a.m. checking them out. Uh, but low pressure right here. Um, you know, it's starting to develop on the Canadian run. All of a sudden, you have a lot of back-end heavy snow for Saturday in general for the Mid-Atlantic, you know, maybe sneaking into New York City. So, you know, it, it's a weird run from the Canadian run, for sure. So, you look at the European Ensemble, and uh, it likes the idea with this system for some accumulating snow into Chicago, northern Illinois, even a little bit of snow for areas of northern Missouri, a little bit of a signal down into St. Louis, and basically, this is a Great Lakes, kind of northern Ohio Valley kind of look. A nice sig signal for maybe a couple inches of snow in Cleveland. Uh, sh nice signal for Ohio. If you, And there's a lot of people that always are commenting about Ohio. Who knows? This could deliver you guys a sneaky couple inches of snow. I know that's not a lot, but, you know, it's something. Uh, central to eastern Kentucky, that's a pretty nice mean for you guys. A couple inches of snow if you're a winter weather fan. And it shows the idea of... Basically, the hills and mountainous regions of the central to southern Appalachian Mountains, uh, I mean, obviously into the northern areas too, into the interior northeast, to see a nice anywhere from one to four inch ensemble mean of snow. And then it picks up on the uh, on the plateau of Tennessee also. So, you know, you see the snow into the mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina. Now you look at the GEFS ensemble and same kind of deal, same idea, same general idea really is. Um, maybe not as solid of a signal for the Great Lakes region and Illinois and things like that, but it's still picking up on the snow for the mountains of West Virginia, Western Virginia, signal for Eastern Kentucky, Tennessee, and North Carolina mountains for sure. But if you're looking for that signal, like if you go back and look at the European Ensemble, if you're looking at that signal for that coastal low, it's, it's not very good. So you got to see if this continues to pump out that secondary low. I would... If I had to choose one way or the other, I would bank on it disappearing tonight. That's just a gut feeling I have. And I know that New England fan, New England snow fans are not going to like that, but that's just my gut feeling. Blend of all models, which is a great, th a great thing to look at at this range. You know, it shows the idea of a lot of mountain snow in West Virginia, them same states that I've probably mentioned 1,800 times in this video so far. But basically the southern and central Appalachian Mountains here, Shows those favored slopes to see snow. I think this weekend could be a great weekend to head to Gatlinburg, maybe. Uh, it, it's right up against the Smokies. I go there every year. And uh, I would go if I would probably go this weekend, honestly, just to walk across that bridge in the snow if it, this snow was going to fall on Saturday. But it looks like most of it's going to fall on Friday. Um, but, you know, if you if you actually timed your, your weekend out to go to the uh, mountains this weekend, um, which a lot of people take a, a winter trip up to the mountains this time of year when you're in the Carolinas. Um, it might you might have timed it up well. I don't think we're going to get a massive snowstorm, but I certainly do think some decent snow could fall. I really do. And in fact, we zone in and kind of look at this region as we're getting into Saturday afternoon. Uh, the snow begins to pick up, and you know I definitely think a few to maybe as much as several inches of snow potentially falls in the southern Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina. Uh, Tennessee, Western Virginia. I certainly think there's a solid signal for these areas right here. Gatlinburg. I, I really, I really have a good feeling about Gatlinburg. I do. Um, I, I think that they could pick up a few inches of snow. I certainly think it's possible. So um, you want to see snow? You want to see it, or you want to bring your kids up there? You know, uh, beg your wife to, to 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 just take a, a spontaneous weekend trip up there. Definitely do it. It's potentially, but um, if you're on the fence about it, about how much snow, 
We'll certainly continue to uh, watch this, see if this uptrends, but it's been stayed about the same of just a few inches of snow to maybe as much as, I think some areas could certainly see up over a half a foot of snow, especially five, 6,000 feet up in the air. But we'll watch this for sure. Um, as far as that signal from low pressure, this is on the ensemble. And basically, like I said, just takes all the L's and put them on and put puts them in one run and creates an ensemble mean. This takes it. We already know the primary low is going to cut across the Ohio Valley. We've all, we've known this. Uh, this moves through, but the big wild card with this is this secondary low that forms. Okay, is there going to be enough cold air? Does the low pressure actually form? I think it does. But how far off the coast it's going to be or how close to the coast will it be? And when does it form? Does enough cold air wrap in? So we watch the secondary low. How much moisture does it throw back into the northeast and mid-Atlantic? And is there enough cold air around for it to be heavy, wet snow? It's, the potential is there. So we need to watch this little signal right here. The storm threat, guys, there is a 15% risk of severe weather occurring within 25 miles in any given location in certain areas of Alabama and Georgia. This includes the big city of Atlanta, Chattanooga, Birmingham, Montgomery, Alabama, Columbus, Georgia. So this is a little bit more further east than what we've been seeing. I think the biggest risk of this, and if you read the discussion from the Storm Prediction Center, will be damaging winds. But I do think there will be some possible spin-ups. But I think what's going to happen is at the tail end of this, you're going to have kind of a round of storms that sweeps through the deep south. And if you look at the pivotal weather here, which always does a great job with some of these um, global models of showing the evolution of these storms, we look into, excuse me, we look into Thursday morning and uh, here comes an area of showers and storms moving out of Mississippi into northern Alabama. And I think that some of these storms, as they're making its way through Birmingham into maybe the morning to early afternoon hours, could be intense. Damaging winds, I think, will be the biggest threat. And then around early to mid-afternoon, the timing is going to buffer some on this. This could be moving through Montgomery, Atlanta, Georgia, Chattanooga, and some of these storms can pack a punch. could be one of those events where you hear a rumble of thunder, see a flash of lightning in areas of north Georgia, on, or maybe even areas in the mountains of uh, southern mountains of um, uh, southwest North Carolina and Tennessee. And then, you know, 12 hours later, you got snow falling. It's just kind of one of those events. It's not uncommon these days. It sure, certainly isn't, or never really has been uncommon. But this continues to work its way through into Thursday afternoon. You could see some strong storms, damaging winds, the primary threat, maybe an isolated tornado. Hail is not going to be a big threat with this at all, um, if any. Um, but this is moving through central Georgia, some damaging winds possible. And then I think it could be knocking on the doorstep of South Carolina, maybe as far north as Charlotte. Uh, Augusta, Georgia, Columbia, South Carolina. I already said that, but um, maybe some storms moving through later Thursday evening for you folks. And then this heads on out. And then look at the blue already showing up behind this as cold air ushers in. So we'll watch this. I don't think this is going to be a huge deal. I think th there is a slight risk, and I think it'll stay a slight risk. I really do, but we'll see. But that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll have you an update in the morning. Of course, the daily update, and then we'll give you the latest updated information and see if the European and the Canadian model – um holds on to that secondary low solution if it does not if it goes away overall i would consider the gfs the biggest winner with this system you know the gfs never showed that wild scenario that the european and canadian showed a few several days ago back in the last week and i certainly think if the european completely goes away with that secondary low of showing a lot of snow into the mid-atlantic and northeast and it folds to the GFS, and then you can give the win to the GFS, which, guys, it doesn't happen a lot. Sometimes the GFS can be rather goofy or what we call in the weather community just flat out drunk. Um, but that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all, and I'll have you an update in the morning.